Ants. Ants are everywhere. They're one of the most successful groups of insects alive today. They've been around for 168 million years, but never really produced species that reached the limit of insect size. You don't ever see an ant species with members the size of the largest beetles. Despite that, there are some true giants. Just one of those is the giant forest ant, Dinomyrmex gigas, the terrible ant. But how terrible are they though? Brand new designs are up on the edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. The scientists who specifically study ants are called myrmecologists. One might think needing a special word for the study of ants when entomology exists for the study of insects is redundant. I would say this is nonsense as the complex eusocial hierarchies of the ants are so complex and unique among the insects that a whole study dedicated to them makes sense. Then again, wasps and bees are just as complex and they don't have a field of study, oh well. The giant forest ant is one of, if not the largest ant species in the world and definitely the largest in Southeast Asia, where they have expanded to cover Thailand, Sumatra, Borneo, Malaysia, and Singapore. These guys prefer to live in these regions across a range of habitats from peat swamps of mangrove forests to rainforests to the montane forest of 1500 meter elevation. Some may recognize the species name Gygus, but not the genus name Dinomyrmix. This is because the giant forest ant used to be referred to the genus Camponotus. The ant has been known since 1802 when it was first given the name Formica gigas. Then it got thrown in the Camponotus genus in the early 1900s. Then the name Dinomyrmix was made in the early 1900s and given to specimens of this species considered separate from the first named one. Over time, the whole thing got more convoluted until it was recognized as Camponotus gigas for a while, until 2016 saw the resurrection of the old Dinomyrmex name, which it is now validly named. Before we jump into my first foray into ants, we need to quickly go over some anatomy and terminology. Ants aren't much different than most insects in their general anatomy. They got a head, thorax, and abdomen like normal. Then you start getting more specific and things get more complicated. In ants, the back end of the abdomen is called the gaster. Many ant gasters are tipped in a stinger they inherited from their common ancestor with wasps and bees. They also have big obvious holes in their backs called spiracles. Those are the ants air intake vents for breathing. They also have another pore after the spiracle called a metapleural gland. This thing is actually way cooler than a breathing hole as it is a gland that secretes special antibiotic fluid. It grooms over its body to fight the good fight against bacterial and fungal infections. If only the cordyceps ants had anti-cordyceps ointment. The giant forest ant comes in two subspecies, Dinomyrmex gigas gigas and Dinomyrmex gigas borneensis. The easiest way to tell them apart is that the borneensis subspecies has light brown colored femora where the main subspecies has dark brown to black ones. The giant forest ant is a polymorphic species. That means they come in many shapes. You social ants have a caste society with queens, infertile female workers, infertile female soldiers, and the rare males who carry around a pair of powerful wings. The queen is usually always the largest individual in the colony. She is the big head honcho after all. She needs the musculature and internal anatomy for moving around her colony and producing a ton of eggs a day. The worker is the smallest member and the most expendable. They tend to the young, collect resources, and build stuff. The soldiers, or majors, are the ones who protect the colony from attack and come to the aid of the minor workers in dispatching prey items or really tough foodstuffs. They are usually bigger than the minor workers, but smaller than the queen. Males have wings and their only purpose is to mate with young queens. As a result, males have huge wings and wing muscles and small everything else. The males and young queens both have wings and take part in what is called nuptial flights. 
where they spring into the air and mate mid-flight. Afterwards, the males die and the females lose their wings and become big queens. In this way, the giant forest ants aren't much different than most ant species. Their polymorphism shows itself within the different castes as well. It's most obvious in the minor workers, as there are large and small ones. The small minor workers are the meekest of the females, with a goofy, rounded head, little eyes, little jaws, and no ocelli. Ocelli are the triforce-looking arrangement of orbs on the forehead of the queens and males, used only for detecting light. The major workers have just one dot. The large minor workers have bigger, boxier heads and mandibles. Majors have huge, arrow-shaped heads packed with extra muscles to power their bigger mandibles and are more heavily built in the thorax department as well. The queen has the smaller head of the large minor worker, but is comparatively much larger. The male is the most rudimentary, with a thin pointed gaster, teeny head with huge eyes, and a robust thorax stuffed with flight muscles. Despite the differences in appearance between the different forms of giant forest ant, they do all share the same color scheme of semi-translucent cherry wood reds and browns near the back end to opaque blacks at the head end. I've belabored the point on their size long enough, so let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to show us just how big these buggers are. The largest worker measures in at 0.82 inches or 20.9 millimeters long, with majors or soldiers at 28.1 millimeters or 1.11 inches in length. Queens are just a bit longer than those majors. Thank you, Mr. Man. The giant forest ant makes moderately sized colonies compared to other ant species. Their large body size allows them to cover much larger areas, making it easier to have larger colonies spread out over larger areas. The best studied colony in Sabah, Malaysia, had about 7,000 workers who could forge up to 8,000 square meters. Giant forest ants are what's called polytomous. This means the colony inhabits many nests, rather than just one. They have many bases of operations run by the same colony. This species is also monogynous, meaning they only have one queen. If she dies, the colony dies. The giant forest ant is an active force in the forests of Southeast Asia. They aren't equipped with huge powerful stingers or painful bites, but they use their sheer size to bully their prey. Prey they choose to hunt at night. The reason these guys come out to play at night is most likely for the increase in humidity and a decrease in temperature once the great big ball of fire goes down below the horizon. On top of that, they are parasitized by flies that need light in order to reproduce and lay eggs in the wounds of majors, so coming out at night reduces this. Coming out at night may also reduce their competition with the many other daytime foraging ants of their range. Giant forest ants have peculiar behavior in preparation for and during their nightly foraging parties. Before they go out for food, a huge number of forager minor workers accumulate in a pack at the entrance to their nest. They are accompanied by a team of majors. Within an hour of the sun going down, the workers leave the nest in what has been called the Exodus. From here, the workers climb into the canopy and use their many systems of trails to find their cattle. In the case of these ants, their cattle are the wax cicadas. The ants mostly eat honeydew, which you can only get from the backside of plant-feeding insects like the cicadas. So, the ants provide protection for these herbivores, and they provide the ants with sugar and carb-rich liquid golden showers. The ants also chow down on floral nectar, warm hot birch, termites, plant sap, rubber, fungi, and supplement that with some fruits, seeds, and arthropods that they'll tear limb from limb if they really need that protein. Giant forest ants are good chaps. Sure, they get into fights with other species of ants if they get too close to their territories and nests, but when a neighboring giant forest ant colony starts barking at their door, they formally declare war and fight with honor. In the case of violent competitive enemies, they spray their formic acid and kill their foes with poison glands. If fighting another colony of the same species, they conduct one-on-one -on -one shadow boxing. Both sides rarely see fatalities. Majors are the only ones involved in these turf battles. The industrious workers stop for no war. 
These ritualistic battles between pairs of ants take forever because they go for multiple rounds. Each round is won by the fighter who remains in the fight the longest. The tired combatant wanders off to rest before starting the next round. These things can go on for a whole month. As the two combatants meet, one may drum their gaster against the ground to begin the starting bells. Like human boxers, the ants will open their mandibles and raise their front legs before touching each other to begin the fight. Both vibrate their bodies and antennae vigorously and box with their front legs, with each fighter gaping their jaws menacingly at one another. Sometimes these shadow boxing fights may progress to mandible wrestling, using their jagged jaws to play tug of war with each other. There is no real winner as a new fighter is tagged in once the first fighter calls it quits. It's quite the spectacle. So we've learned that the giant forest ant is more than its really uncreative common name. It's a force to be reckoned with, but is generally nowhere near as horrifying as the army ants, bullet ants, or any other hurtful colonizing ant species. They are not the only huge ant species, so the next time I may cover them, whether they are alive or from the fossil record. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.